Hello, friends, and welcome to the Dimension of Our Midnight Cake, a weekly transmission from the Nexus of Realities. I'm Soltis, and joining me are my friends and fellow trans-dimensional beings, Beaches. What a lovely name. <laughs> and Lumberdor. Um, last night in Soho, uh, I don't really remember what happened. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, Doug has found himself lost between the dimensions in pocket realities, but hopefully he'll turn up next week. Last Night in Soho is a 2021 British psychological horror film directed by Edgar Wright and co-written by Wright and Christy Wilson Cairns. It stars Thomas McKenzie, Anya Taylor-Joy, Matt Smith, Rita Tushingham, Michael Ajao, Terrence Stamp, and Diana Rigg. It also marks the final film appearance of Rig and Margaret Nolan, who both died in 2020. The film is dedicated to the memories of Rig and Nolan. Last Night in Soho premiered at the 78th Venice International Film Festival on the 4th of September, 2021. It was theatrically released in the UK and the United States on the 29th of October, 2021, and generally received positive reviews from critics who praised its production design, cinematography, costume design, direction, and performances, while its writing did receive some criticism. Despite this, the film performed poorly at the box office, grossing $23 million worldwide on a budget of $43 million. The film was nominated for two BAFTA Film Awards, including Outstanding British Film and Best Sound. Last Night in Soho is 116 minutes long. If you enjoy our conversations and would like to contribute or get in contact with us, consider visiting our website at ourmidnightcake.com, liking and subscribing, and sharing the transmission with your friends. And be sure to join us next week as we will be discussing Kung Pao, Enter the Fist, 2002 American martial arts comedy film. Okay, um, so first impressions of this movie. I really enjoyed it. I'm glad that this was suggested, even though Doug isn't here. Would you consider this to be a, a well-made B movie? Uh, no, I think it's a little bit too polished for B movie status. Yeah, I, I suppose I should rephrase. I don't mean to give the impression that this is you know something that Mystery Science Theater three thousand would make fun of. Oh, okay, um, okay. But that if a B movie were to get the funding, the big, and the big the, budget treatment, the big budget treatment. Okay, the, yeah, the, yeah. The right director, the right actors, the right cinematography. Can I throw out a, an example here? I feel yeah, yeah. like that's what happened with uh, James Wan and the The Conjuring, at least the first two. What should have been just like schlocky haunted house possession uh -huh. movies, you know, James Wan just uh, t turned out some some brilliant horror movies. <laughs> yeah, in that way, yeah, I, I yeah, I, I, I agree. Yeah, that's where I was going with that question. You don't like, include the third one because James abandoned it. <laughs> <laughs> I hadn't seen anything about it. Any sort of uh, spoilers or previews or anything about it so i went in completely fresh mm. and it was entertaining i it, it's, it seems like such a weird thing for the very minimum <laughs> a movie should be as entertaining yeah. but <laughs> it seems like such a rare thing at least for me these days i really enjoyed this i did well, hallelujah i didn't yeah <laughs> right <laughs> <laughs> I think I might have watched a trailer, but I didn't pay attention enough to realize that it was going to be like a psychological thriller. Once that really kind of like sneaking in more throughout the movie, it just made me enjoy it even more. I The first trailer I saw in a theater for this, I thought it looked like just a straight, you know, straight up horror movie. So I'm really glad that it did. You know, it. it I mean, it, I don't know how frightening it was. It did lean in the horror direction. So I enjoyed that. I got to say. While I enjoyed it, I have to ask. I just I don't have trouble with this suspension of disbelief thing. You know, <laughs> I'm mm -hmm. not sitting through a movie trying to guess. You know, the who did it and the plot and everything. And somehow I accidentally predicted all of this movie's twists <laughs> <laughs> very early on, and that makes me suspect that it maybe wasn't that that it wasn't that clever. Yes. <laughs> Did it seem terribly predictable to you guys? It was predictable to me, but I still enjoyed watching it play out. Yes. Yes. Yeah. And and the predictions I'm saying, like, I'm still not I'm not sitting here trying to sleuth the movie, but 
like the the elderly gentleman who they clearly wanted you to think was Matt Smith. Mm-hmm. Yeah. At least I'm like, they, they want me to think this is Matt Smith, but he doesn't look like an elderly Matt Smith. And and when we saw the uh, the detective character, the, the cop, I was like, it mm-hmm. kind of looked more like him. Yeah. <laughs> and I wasn't trying to predict anything. It just turned out that that was all right. It was maybe the second dream sequence in when I said, wouldn't it be weird if like the old lady was the woman in the dream? <laughs> 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 and so at the at the end of the movie i was like well <laughs> <laughs> i should have put that together earlier on than i did did you guys know that that lady was diana rig i did yes she yes, has did. died recently unfortunately and do you know where you've seen her before i never know she was emma peel in the 60s uh avengers series oh <laughs> she was lady holiday and the great Muppet Caper. <laughs> See that one. I, that one I know right there. Great and Muppet she Caper. was James Bond's only wife. That's true. A lot, of, a lot of neat history there, and probably some things she's much more proud of than the stuff. And those things. <laughs> <laughs> the movie is fantastically cast. Mm. There are people with whom I was not familiar. The main Tomlinson. Yeah, I, Thompson I McKenzie. I, I did not recognize. Mechanism? She was the Jewish girl in um jojo rabbit oh okay she was yes yeah. i recognized her from something but i didn't think it was jojo rabbit yeah that's the only thing i remember her from but uh oh, anya taylor no. joy fantastic yeah as sandy the characters themselves are not very developed i would say too like the character development in this one in particular with so much of it being like a dream sequence and being from her point of view like i think we got enough of the characters that we saw that it didn't necessarily need too much more, but uh, I normally agree with you on that too. That it's a situation a, where the, just the, the performances are so full. That's they are, they, they really, you're are. okay with just that surface level, mm-hmm. you know, uh, cause you're enjoying it throughout. Um, and the cinematography is, Oh, wow. So well done. The cinematographer, I was looking him up. Chung Hoon Chung. <laughs> he's also done <laughs> obi-wan kenobi <laughs> <laughs> not one of your favorite credits no no not not one of my favorites there's oh, the okay twist. well kenobi <laughs> kenobi was it necessarily you know poorly filmed or is it hard to tell because of the bad yes. story <laughs> <laughs> yes yes okay, okay, the, the story is terrible it is poorly filmed <laughs> and uh. staged so I've heard some stuff about the final episodes. I'm actually kind of interested in. <laughs> if I if I were him, I would leave Kenobi off my resume. <laughs> but if I were involved in any way in the production of Last Night in Soho, I would definitely put it on my resume. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I was it's really interested in this. Very well done. I loved what Edward Wright did with Baby Driver and how the music was so influential to each he's always scene. so good with music he is and i was really interested in this because of it just from what i knew having kind of being a time period piece in a way so i figured it'd be heavy on certain music styles and um i really i liked how it tied stuff together and even as the dream sequences kind of went on the music was some of the only things kind of holding her chaos together at times i was reading up about this and the dream sequences originally the concept was just going to be like a music video sort of yeah um Mm. and there wasn't going to be any dialogue but the co-writer she said that in order to for people to sympathize with sandy you're going to need to hear her talk and and go through her story like that. In order for you to buy that she's a sympathetic character in yes. the end yeah. and not just a murderess. And not just a serial killer. Yeah. <laughs> right, right, right. And I have, I have some questions about that when we get to that. So, so Thomason is an aspiring fashion designer. I can't. Mm-hmm. Eloise. Was that her name? Eloise. That was the character. Eloise, Eloise. Turner. Mm-hmm. Okay. Who we're we're let in from the get go that she's either crazy or she sees her dead mother, which was creepy, creepy enough. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Either mentally unstable or she has some sort of connection to the spirit realm mm. <laughs> and some. Yeah, level. for sure. I was kind of hooked 
in the first scene where the, the music the, starts the, and she's dancing around in her newspaper dress. W- yes. yes she yeah. made. <laughs> I loved it. Yeah. Okay. So she gets accepted to this prestigious Academy of Art in London for the fashion design program. She's super excited. She's going to go to the big city. I like the discussion between her and the cab driver about how she had been there before and things had changed. And the cab driver says something about um, it's about still buried under the London surface. Is, yeah. And I was yeah. like, yeah, once you start to see that from her point of view, where she sees the locations she's seen in her dreams. I thought that was neat. That's, that's a wonderful subtext and setup that is difficult to find nowadays. Mm-hmm. where it's just a, a almost a throwaway line it plays on in the movie and that's nice she meets her roommate who is stereotypical <laughs> mean girls yes yeah <laughs> i don't know if any of you listening have ever been to an art school or involved in an art program at a school <laughs> but these are the kinds of people that you find <laughs> in droves <Yes. laughs> she can't stand being around <laughs> her roommate <laughs> and so she takes off and find her a, roommates, friends, or the people they surround themselves with, including yes. the least graceful pickup line I've ever heard. <laughs> yeah, right to the point, then. Right? Oh, my <laughs> gosh. <laughs> Glad I wasn't watching this one with Grandma. <laughs> she gets to this almost attic apartment in this old building but it wasn't too different to what she was familiar with so it felt safe and away mm-hmm. from all the chaos she had just experience of being new to london um but she has her own space and and you know she can take care of her own things and the landlady seems nice you know particular about specific things like that funny <laughs> smell that might come up during the summer <laughs> which we later find out <laughs> oh leave it to a horror movie to place someone with uh some amount of supernatural sensitivity in a bedroom with bodies buried underneath the floorboards <laughs> and the walls and anywhere else you can uh. <laughs> and her first night she yeah, she starts having the dreams and it seems like like this lady that she's dreaming about is someone that she herself can aspire to be. Um, she seems to, to recognize a kindred spirit in someone who may be new to town, wants to be a success, wants to be a performer, and has all the confidence to achieve it for herself. So Eloise starts patterning her look after this girl that she's been dreaming about and, and the, changes her the- hair and changes her clothes. The dance scene in that opening dream, the first night, yeah, mm-hmm. I, I thought was fantastic as I was watching it. I planned to look it up to see if uh, there was some information about whether or not it was done practically. Apparently, there was one transition. You know the one I'm talking about where it's uh, it keeps you oh, got well, Matt where, where Smith. They're going back and forth between yes, yeah. between the two girls, between Sandy and Eloise. They said there was one transition in the entire thing that was done like uh, digitally, but everything else was practical choreography. I thought it was just from it's, what I it's remember. It's fun to watch. Because um, Edward Wright's movies are always really interesting to see anything behind the scenes, how he does stuff, how he thinks through things. I've always enjoyed watching any of the like commentary, any of that on any of his films, because he, he doesn't rely heavy on digital stuff, obviously, which this actually, I think, probably had more digital effects than anything that he's done previously and that that stuff has its place and i think yeah they used it well but yeah so much better if you can do it like they did yeah yes i saw in an interview there was uh the first time she saw sandy in a mirror they did that practically as well and the uh coat check guy i guess it was yeah Mm -hmm. um was actually twins (laughs) oh that's funny (laughs) yeah that is fantastic (laughs) oh Movie magic. Love it. Oh, the sets were really well done. All the all of the locations were excellent. The the costuming was fantastic as well. Yeah. You know, we talked about this before where where the costume becomes an extension of the character and you learn a lot more about the character than just talking to them. They can they can tell you a lot more about them. And I think that, that was very evident with this movie. I read that Anya um sang 
actually all, all her uh, everything that was her singing was actually her oh really oh that's that's oh, always that's, nice. that's impressive yeah yeah well she is multi-talented that she actually suggested in the audition scene that she do it a cappella because they had done a couple of different takes of of how to do it and she suggested the a cappella version i like that it seemed much more impromptu mm-hmm. it seemed more authentic too doing it that way mm-hmm. just get up there and impress me <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I was also reading a bit about during the writing process, Edgar Wright and uh, Christy Wilson Cairns, they rented a, a studio in Soho in the neighborhood where they were working and then filming later on. Yeah. Yeah. I never had any trouble telling where, where we were versus like, like modern and, and like sixties. And, um, mm-hmm. you know, even if they were supposed to be similar locations. Yeah. And, and how they, how they bleed into each other also worked very well. Mm-hmm. Usually with movies where there's that transition, it's not as seamless. And I hadn't thought about that as much, but you're completely right. Like I had no trouble telling which was which, what was going on. Um, and a lot of times that's such a huge issue that they're way too obvious with the transitions. And you still, so, don't, still don't get it. <laughs> <laughs> you get the giant, the giant numbering. Yes. 1960. <laughs> <laughs> What was it through a combination of uh, dream sequences and I guess uh, Eloise's investigations, we see uh, Sandy's life play out in kind of a, a more disappointing way than than she'd expected. So at first, we're led to believe that she has been or was eventually murdered by Matt Smith's character, and this is this is thoroughly believable. Like yeah. it, right? Uh, from what we've seen. I was trying to think. At what, at what point does it start to turn? Um, uh, yeah, there there are some conveniences as far as the, the mm. plot goes, just to you know keep the movie going. I guess mm-hmm. things that happen because the movie needs them to happen. Ah, but yeah, she finds out that elderly gentleman Terrence Stamp is uh, is actually the cop who uh, told Sandy that she was probably better than the life she had fallen into. I'd say they did that all pretty pretty well because in that scene where you realize that uh, what that audition had turned into, you felt mm-hmm. really bad for her, I thought. Oh, yeah. I did. Yeah. Like, oh, no, Sandy. I mean, yeah. <laughs> pe- you have to pay your dues, but not like this. No. Yeah. <laughs> she goes back to the, uh, the, the apartment, I guess, to get her stuff because she's going to leave town. Mm-hmm. And she feels like she needs to explain herself to the old lady almost stabbed somebody so nice and then <laughs> and is indirectly responsible for the death of <laughs> someone else to her yeah. credit she seemed appropriately horrified <laughs> yes <laughs> but uh you know it was allowed to flee the scene of that mm-hmm. as well <laughs> but yes she's she's gonna pack up and I, take off. I like the scene where she calls her gran you know and she's she just you, you have to come and get me you have to do you know and then she sees what was the character's name john john mm-hmm. yeah yeah she sees him and she just leaves grand dangling <laughs> yeah she's like never mind <laughs> <John's here. laughs> my simp's gonna help me <laughs> yeah i could live without john <laughs> So yeah, she's got to explain herself to the lady that's been so kind to her thus far. And uh, of course, of course, she's got to drink that tea, the poison tea. I love um, Diana there. I love how calm she is when oh, she's yes. revealing. Again, very well cast, yeah. very well acted <laughs> and very well directed. The, the the whole scene is incredibly well done. And it's, it's, suffic- it's, it's sufficiently creepy where she's just, you know, very in, in a very grandmotherly way, explaining mm-hmm. the story. <laughs> and and in Eloise's mind, she's like, you know, I've seen all this. I understand. She really does. Mm-hmm. And she really yeah. kind of relates to her and probably would not have given her up. No, but she's selling not. her this. She obviously um, doesn't trust anyone, I guess. <laughs> and well, as well, as I, somebody, I, I love how calmly she explains that it's like, no, it's it's too late. You, you you're gonna go to sleep now. It's, it's been my experience with serial killers that that's a common theme, that they don't trust anybody. <laughs> Do you? Did you get the impression that it 
kind of fell apart towards the end. I, I know, I know it, what I didn't love about the ending. It to me, it felt like a different movie, like like more of a CGI monster well, movie kind of. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it, it, yeah, yeah. It, it, it kind of it kind of spiraled. Hard. Like it? it went really hard, like um, CGI haunted house. Yes, in that that last scene, I enjoyed her. You know, uh, may, maybe in her poisoned stupor, seeing the elderly lady as the young Sandy again. And why is it in in these ghost movies that the wrong spirits that are seeking help always do it so maliciously? <laughs> Oh well, yeah, I, I was going to mention uh, that. The last, these guys are always so malevolent when uh, you know they're wanting you to somehow release them. Yeah. They could just ask. You just ask nicely. <laughs> She's reaching for the phone, and then he grabs the phone and picks it up to, mm-hmm. you know, pulling Whatever. it away from her. Yeah, <laughs> and then it's, help us. Well, I'm, she's trying to. She just needs to get to the phone <laughs> to make the call. I also think it would have been enough just to see the mother at the end. Did they have to do the hammy thing with seeing Sandy? And Yeah, I'm not sure what that was supposed to convey. Because it was right after her grandmother had said something about like how everybody was proud of her. Maybe it was the fact, maybe it was um, Sandy kind of acknowledging that too, that, you know, she was glad that she made it, even though she didn't or something. Sandy was was happy that she survived her murder attempt on her. Yes, yeah. yes. <laughs> lived out her dreams the way she wasn't able to that's that's as good a that's, that's as nice that's, that's a cap to put as on it close yeah. as, as that could be yeah <laughs> <laughs> like you're you're living your dream it didn't work out for me so i killed a lot of people <laughs> <laughs> i want to say again while i had some questions while i had some questions i i really enjoyed the the movie throughout Oh yes, yes I did. I, yeah, I, like, I would, these, I would these watch are it again. Nitpicky things for me, but yeah, I'd, I'd watch it over anything else that I've seen recently. Thank you for joining us in the dimension of our midnight cape. We hope you'll visit us again. From myself, Lumberdor, Beaches, and Doug. Thank you, and good night. Look what came in the mails. Oh my gosh, are you serious? Did you get yours too? Yeah. <laughs> All right. I'll bring mine and we can like hit them together. Because <laughs> okay. that's, that's how we read. <laughs> Hopefully make a baby Ronan. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, you know, of course, the day the day you get get it in the mail, they announce that there's some sort of special, uh, I don't know, uh, like like uh, dust jacket edition. They're gonna make like only two hundred of or some crap uh, like that. What jerks! They could at least have that as it. a pre order on Amazon or something. You know, I ain't falling for it. I waited for the hardcover. I'm gonna read it. Hopefully, enjoy it. In there. <laughs> okay. <laughs> This has been a completely off-topic discussion. It has been. Turtles. That's very cool. Turtle. Turtles are um, always on topic. Looking forward to reading that my own self. <laughs> um, Maybe one day we can smash covers. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, way worse than it was supposed that's to. Such a, that's such a strange he, he, euphemism. He, he, he <laughs> said smash. <laughs> he did. <laughs> Well, if you haven't already ordered it, there's a fancy dust jacket version out there now.